Okay, problem one for gas loss. Um, a sample C2H4 is placed in a previously evacuated rigid 2 liter container and um, heated from, oops, I'm trying to get my pen here, heated from 300 to 450K. If you don't remember, 273 is um, you add to degrees Celsius to get your Kelvin, so you have to remember that. So this is pretty close to room temperature. It's about 27 degrees. The pressure of the sample is measured and plotted in the graph below. So here's temperature and here's pressure in atmospheres. Um, they're using Kelvin here because almost always when we use gas laws, we use Kelvin temperature. Um, it says describe two reasons why the pressure changes as the temperature increases. Your description must be in terms of what occurs at the molecular level. So here we go. Here's our sealed container. And we have our molecules of ethane. Okay. So number one, what happens? We heat it up and the kinetic energy of the molecules increases. And because the kinetic energy of the molecules increases, they are moving faster. And so they hit sides <laughs> sorry, of container more often. Okay, so molecules move faster. They hit sides of containers more often. That's why the pressure goes up. A second reason, when the kinetic energy increases, they move faster. and they hit sides of container harder. Okay, so those are the two reasons why the pressure increases as we increase temperature. In the next question, it says we put at the, excuse me, C2H4 plus HCl to produce C2H5Cl. That's chloroethane. And here's the chemical reaction. When HCl is injected into the container of C2H4, so we have in here in our container C2H4. Okay, and we're going to put in some HCLs. All right. So when we do that, we put in HCl, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so we're going to have twice as much stuff in here. So our pressure will increase more material or molecules in container. But what happens once the reaction occurs? If the reaction goes to completion, we get a new substance. Let me find a color. Now, we would get, instead of having eight things, I started with four of these and four of these, I would only get four of these. So there's eight things in there here, and there's four things in there at the end. They're a little bigger, but they're not taking up much more space. So as the pressure increases, more material in the container, um, more molecules at beginning. Okay, so as the reaction proceeds, let me scroll down a little. Let me change it to a color you'll be able to see better. Um, obtain fewer molecules of gas product. So P goes down. Okay, first because you added a second amount of material, so pressure went up because twice as many molecules Okay, and they're hitting the container more times. So let's go through the question. Explain this decrease in total pressure in terms of. So at the beginning, you have twice as many molecules, pre P goes up. All right, and then as the reaction proceeds, 
then you have fewer molecules because the reaction has two molecules on the reactant side and only one molecule on the product side. And let's go on. It is proposed that the formation of ethyl chloroethane proceeds via this two-step reaction mechanism. I know we're jumping over to kinetics, but we're going to have overlap in our problem, so we have to expect that. So two different steps. Get back to red. Write the rate law for the reaction that is consistent with the reaction mechanism above. So we look at this and we say a rate law can be determined from each of these steps. It doesn't matter. We can have a rate law for this one and a rate law for this one, and it'll always be written directly from the equation. You never have products in the rate law, no products, and it'll be this to the first power times this to the first power, this, and in this one it'll be this to the first power and this to the first power. But we remember that the rate determining step sets the rate. So to answer this first question C, to write the rate law, I would say rate is equal to K times the concentration of C2H4 times the concentration of HCl. And they're both to the first power because they both have a coefficient of 1. We will not write this. The fast step happens so quickly that it doesn't affect the overall rate. It's always the rate determining step. All right, and then D, identify an intermediate in the reaction mechanism above. Okay, so let me just, oops, remove this. Oops, got to get to my eraser. I don't want that to be interfering with what we're doing right now. Go back to my pen. So intermediates are produced in one reaction and used up in the next reaction. So if we're looking for something that's in both the first and second reactions, but not in the products. And we see right here that C2H5 plus is produced and then used up. Okay? And we could have also said the same thing about Cl. It is produced and then used up. So intermediates, C2H5 plus, okay. And it's exactly the same thing in the second one. Or you could have said Cl minus. Either of those are used up, okay. Formed and then used. All right, keep going. Using the axis provided below, draw a curve that shows the energy changes that occur during the progress of the reaction. The curve should illustrate both the proposed two-step mechanism and the enthalpy change of the reaction. Proposed two-step mechanism, enthalpy change of the reaction. So let me go back. I'm gonna click on this. Let me get my pen. And let me copy that. I didn't realize it needed it, so let's go on. And then I'll go over to the next page. And I'm just going to put it right here. Paste. I just want to have this handy for us. Okay. Put it down here at the bottom. All right, so we know it's going to be two steps. And we know that. It has um, a delta H. We had the delta H in a previous problem, so I don't need that right now. Right here. Delta H is minus 72.6 kilojoules. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Oops, go back to my pen. Okay. So we know at the beginning, we're going to have our reactants. And because this is a negative, that our products are going to be down here. Products, reactants. Okay? And we know it's a two-step mechanism. And we also know that the first step is rate determining. So the first step is going to have a higher 
E activation than the second step. We don't really know anything about the first and second steps except this one has a larger E activation and this one has a smaller E activation. It would be here. Okay, and we know that overall it's going to be endothermic, so our, here's where our delta H would be. For delta H to be negative, the products have to be lower <clears throat> than the reactants because it's always the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants is equal to our delta H. All right. All right. So using the axis below, draw a curve that shows the energy changes that occur during the progress of the reaction. The curve should illustrate the, both the proposed two-step mechanism and the enthalpy change of the reaction. So starting with reactants, going to products, energy to get to the peak should be higher for step one and lower for step two. Okay, there we go. On the abo diagram above, clearly indicate the activation energy for the rate determining step in the reaction. Okay, this is the EA, step one. Okay, and um, that's all we needed to know. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave that there. And I think there's one more piece, maybe not. Nope, that's it. So we, we're ending there, thank you.